Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless State, and this is a uh, pre-market AM report for Friday, November 13th, 2015. It's been a very turbulent time. I don't need to uh, remind everyone. However, there's a couple of very important reminders and observations that I've been talking about for, I would say, a good two weeks or so uh, regarding the seasonality as in the mid-month um, blow-ups that we see in the market, for a better choice of words. I've repeatedly said in many of my video casts and also shown through, uh, through my charts, that it's always around the 15th of the month give or take a couple of days that things hit uh, uh, things start to get pretty rocky given the fact that we had uh, we had a powerful uh, surge rally in between corrective consolidation channels as you can see in the background um, all the way up towards uh, the highs of uh, the, the the breakdown highs I should say of uh, August 17 it was only natural that the market would consolidate and there would be a consolidation channel or profit taking channel or whatever you might want to call it. Also keep in mind that I warn people very clearly in the clearest terms both in the chat room in the video cast in the periscope broadcast that I do intraday not to take any oversized long positions that to be selective in what they're buying and to have hedges. So therein brings me to a question that I like to ask everyone because this is a question that I ask myself is why not have some hedges in the form of SPX puts or UVXY or UVXY calls and such which minimize which minimize the pain or a, you know or on on a certain day for example like yesterday on a certain day to minimize the pain of um, of a um, oh I'm sorry of of a market pullback when you can get you know four plus points on the UVXYs, you can get almost two to four hundred percent. Those are intraday numbers on these hedges. So when I go out there and ask the question in the trading room, when obviously there's a feeling of despair, uh, which generally uh, 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 happens at uh, in, in, in a bottoming in a tradable bottoming process in the market. Um, and I've done, I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, don't forget that my service started on a day that the mark uh, that was April 15, 2014, where the market was basically crashing down. I looked at all the technicals and stuff, made a call, and within an hour the market turned, and at least for now, still hasn't looked back to those numbers. Okay. Now, saying all that, it is personal responsibility. It's how you manage your stuff. You cannot rely on blow by blow accounts every five minutes when levels are being hit bounced off keep in mind that yesterday we did a whole bunch of multiple uh, aside from the hedges which worked out really good we also did a whole bunch of multiple scalp trades during the day which worked out very well net net it was a red day I you know accept that what's the big deal but the point is that w that you really have to understand what's happening in the background and not just go with your emotional quotient or your emotional fear because I've always said and I'm going to stick by it because this is what I do for a living and I you know so far it's worked out great is uh, is 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 that pretty much at a point at an inflection point where the market is starting to find the floor is the point of maximum pain is the point of maximum fear and like I always said, is the point of maximum despair. Now, saying all that, let me show this to you all on technical terms. Now, I've been talking about this consolidation channel that charts been put up there for you know more than uh, you know since uh, since more you know since uh, what was it uh, beginning of uh, um, of uh, of November. So here we are getting to the bottom of the consolidation chain uh, channel. Now, also keep in mind that if you listen to my video casts and my forecasts and my charts and uh, review them, you'll see clearly that I showed all the possibilities of what might happen. Well, this is the possibility that is happening right now, which is a higher probability trade. That we come down here and we test either this level here, or which would be around 203 on the spies, that's, uh, that's testing that old gap fill again that we blew through, and it also shows as a pattern symmetry or we hold the bottom of the consolidation channel give or take which is pretty much where we are right now um right here at around the 204 level and getting the and 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 looking at this pattern symmetry it makes sense now what would uh, this was a this was a trading band that we are trading on till about till about uh the 21st of october 
okay, before we broke out. And again, this trading band is very much in place as in a support level here. Re remember, resistance becomes support. So this was resistance for a whole bunch of days till we broke out. So at this point, there is a likelihood that on a real blow, uh, a real uh, 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 sort of fallout, another capitulated fallout that we get down to is the 202 level. This needs to hold because if this doesn't hold, then we are back down below the 2000s. I've said it repeatedly, we do not want to go into the 2000s because once that happens, there is a massive, massive amount of fear. There's obviously a massive amount of fear right now. And at that point, uh, you start to see, you, they, they start talking about breaking down the lower level of, of, of 199 uh, or 1990 uh, or so on the S&P 500 uh, and then testing these lows. Anyway. First at hand is this is what I'm seeing here. I believe that this channel is going to hold and that if we if this is pattern symmetry, then we're going to bounce up uh, from about the uh, 2040 level or 2030 level on the S&Ps uh, up to its testing the right shoulder again here. This was this is another right shoulder and that's around the 2080 level. You have to be proactive. You have to be proactive um, and and you have to manage your trades. There are different ways to do it. I'm not a trade management expert for you guys because I don't want to do that. Uh, that's your job to figure out how you how, how you really manage your trades. Uh, that's what that's way too much responsibility for me, and I'm certainly not going to do that. So saying all that, um, what I would say is once the dust uh, settles, probably over the next 24 hours or so, going into Monday, um, we should have a sizable bounce, which takes us either to the upper end of the channel, uh, around the 207 levels on the SPY, the 2070, or up to 2080. At this point, we do have a 3450 crossover, so that's negative, no question about it. And we'll have to see how the market reacts going into December. But saying all that, uh, definitively, have the UVXY hedges, uh, uh, have the SPX puts, uh, 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 some of them. Be very selective on your positions and be very, very have very small positions. There will be sizable bounces. And chasing is not an option here, okay? And chasing is not a great uh, trading strategy either. Uh, on a high momentum move type of markets, you can chase and make a, a bunch of money. However, in my opinion, uh, trying to chase uh, 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 stocks, um, into into highs as they're moving up uh, from breakdown levels is not necessarily a good idea. I'd rather be a despair buyer, for a better choice of words, uh, where things get uh, deep oversold. You know, maybe down here at the two or three level on the on the on the spies, and uh, rather than anything else. Now. Taking a look at the same chart here on uh, on the S&P 500, uh, let me show uh, let me show uh, um, a couple of things which uh, uh, make sense to me. Uh, right here we have a confluence. Uh, right we have we have a rising 34-day moving average, and uh, this the, this consolidation channel obviously has broken down. Uh, and and at this point, let me just draw this out. You can draw this either as a megaphone which stops around here or you can draw it as a consolidation channel uh like um just okay just like this okay so at this point uh the 100 day moving average is support that's around 2036 then you have the upward rising 34 that's at 2031 so the confluence of lines here which could which should act as support the other things that's happening here which has always worked for me always worked for me is looking at uh, looking at these extreme oversold levels uh, and looking at the uh, looking at uh, where we are with the internals the simplest way to look at it is the stochastic so at this point we are not fully in the daily at least we are not fully oversold we get fully oversold when we get down and we start to basically you know get down towards these level below 20. so we're getting there we probably could get there by today or monday um and uh, and and again every time this has happened and i mean every single time all right the market has had a solid tradable bounce whether or not the tradable bound ho bounce holds i can't tell you that because there are dynamics out there in the global markets uh which are, which are completely out of our control so saying all that um look to see this line here, which was the previous uh, trading band that we were trading in for months and months, right? Going from February of 2015, we were trading in this trading band, and that's when we fell out of this trading band down here. We are back to that level. Now, the real hardcore bear scenario would be that we break down similar to what happened here. What are the chances of that? Hey, it's there. You know, I can't really tell you. You know, uh, um, however, uh, I believe that these upwardly rising, powerful trend lines should act as support. And the fact that we are down here, 
okay, uh, that we have lost uh, uh, about 100 or so, a little less than 100 S&P points, which is roughly about 600 or so points on the, on the, on the, on the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the fact that the internals are coming down to the same uh, deep oversold levels like we were when we were down in the 1850 is known as a positive divergence. So in simple terms, that we are creating higher low, okay, we're creating higher low, but look to see what's happening on the, the simplest internals, which are the stochastics, and we are basically coming down to the same bottom, uh, um, you know, the same uh, same type of uh, uh, deep oversold levels. So looking at the spies, um, this this is a chart that obviously, you know, uh, I've been showing for a while here. It's the same story being played out on the spies. And uh, just removing all these arrows here. And don't for let's not forget that oil is a major culprit in this picture, uh, and that uh, and that obviously and and a couple of uh, Draghi's comments that he's not seeing any major uh, uh, movement on the eurozone and that he's it's open to doing more QE in December. Uh, obviously, you know, shook the markets up a little bit. But oil is the main culprit here. You get the massive dislocations uh, in different asset classes because oil's, uh, you know, uh, completely uh, collapsing uh, and hitting new lows. And uh, and again, that that causes ripple effects. And like they say, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. There are tons of stocks which have nothing to do uh, with the oil market but are held in the in, in similar hedge funds and portfolios which hold a lot of oil stocks. So obviously, you're going to uh, you know you're gonna you're, you're gonna feel that you're gonna feel the pain now saying all that uh one of one of our members you know came out and said the market's going to 1950. look the trend line is there and there is a possibility it gets there however i do not think that's something in the cards for the month of november that's what i'm getting at okay it could very well happen uh at that time but but for the market to fall from 206 okay uh, 2060 uh or 204 down to 1950 i just want to keep things in perspective i'm not an alarmist i certainly am practical about what i'm telling you very realistic but please i do not want alarmist comments on the board after all this is my service and i do have a right to uh to to uh, moderate uh, the statements that are being made keep in mind when the things get really heavy and people are are, are down on their positions and especially a lot of traders who are doing stupid things in my opinion by not taking hedges by keeping oversized positions by chasing every little tick okay um and not listening to what I've been saying for, for over a whole bunch of days now, that the market's overbought and there's a consolidation period, also repeating that the middle of the month is always a dangerous time, till it's their fault, and I will stick by it, okay? So take personal responsibility and do what's right, and you yourself will be happy with your results. And that's the way I look at it. There's a downtrend line here, and that downtrend line is intersected at around 203. So like I said, you know, we are getting there. We're not quite there yet. But then again, there are no perfect moments, right? Looking at the USO, this is definitively a large macro falling wedge, similar to this very large macro falling wedge that we dealt with. Uh, that we dealt with earlier on. Uh, and let me just show you right there. And then you take this line and you put it like that, right right there, okay? So the bottom line is, yes, it can slip and slide a little bit lower, but what's going to, you know, and it's possible that it gets to the lower end of the Bollinger uh, or at least, you know, probably a couple more cents on the USO. Oil falls another dollar or so. But let's not go out there and think that all of a sudden oil is going to be, you know, a dollar on the gas tanks, okay? It doesn't work like that. So these large macro falling wedges uh, take a few days to develop and then you have a sharp move up. And that sharp move up is coming, all right? And at that point, that'll be a sell event. So what do you do as smart traders? You basically go out there and you, you, you cost average down. You take the pain maybe for 24 to 48 hours, if not a little bit more. And then you have those, you know, shooting fish in the barrel type of scenarios where you just sell at will. Okay. So in order for, the, for uh, in order for to make those two, 300% on the USO uh, lottos, uh, you need to be positioned earlier, not later, because chasing them up here, or, and, and oil's up overnight, you know, a dollar, uh, or let's say, you know, early part of next week or something like that, uh, you are not going to be able to, chase, you know, uh, buy into. So again, the old saying, you know, buy when you can, not when you're forced to. Same thing with selling. Sell when you can, not when you're forced to. I like oversold markets. I like to spare because those are the best buying opportunities. Thank you for listening.